Hello and welcome to the Strong Friend Podcast with Jack and Lewis. Today we talk about faith and faith in the universe, faith in something that's that's bigger than yourself. We talk about how we rediscovered that feeling and we changed our perspective of the world was against us to actually <laughs> everything happens the way it's supposed to. If you know someone who's really struggling with the thought that everything is against them and that the world is a real nasty place, share this with them and maybe that can change their opinion. So yeah, man, uh, what's been going on this week? I, I feel like we haven't, I don't think we spoke as much this week as we usually do. So I think we've both been a bit busy, but... Yeah, I. this week has been, it's been mainly focused around obviously trying to prepare for the lockdown. So mm. obviously the lockdown's come into force now um where it's a full national lockdown and i needed to make sure that i had uh something in place for where i can work yeah something in place for obviously a workout routine or a gym routine and just a bit of anxiety around all of that so that's that's really what my week has been focused on uh what about yourself mate i'm the same like obviously the first thing that came to mind was like i need to work out so i've got like a it's a pretty, it's like a crappy heavy duty folding up exercise bike but it does the job like all the panels are off it and everything but it, regardless it still works so i'm just using that and i've got one of those what you call them resistance bands so you like mm. stand on them yeah, you can yeah do like curls you can sit on them and do sh- shoulder press and i understand like i've got like a pair of 20k dumbbells as well but for now, I think it's just you've got to make the best of a, of the situation, haven't you? And if we're in a lockdown, we're in a lockdown. But we can always do runs and all that kind of stuff. So definitely, exercise is a priority and nutrition as well. Well, you can find some way to, to make your body move. So even yeah. for the past couple of days, I've been going on long cycles. Uh, yeah. That's something everyone. I think I think everyone found something during lockdown that that they got into that was physically challenging so i think you just need to find that again and pick it back up whether it's whether it reminds you of it whether it makes you feel like yeah, crap yeah. again thinking about it you just got to do it um mate i think for me it was yoga like the last time there's a youtuber called yoga of adrian uh you've probably tried her but she's fucking amazing at what she does mate yeah like, some of the workouts on there like you build up a sweat and you relieve a load of muscle tension as well and I was, I was getting into a rhythm of doing them, like, every day because some of them, there's some, like, she does, like, 30-day challenges, so some of them are going to be, like, really active and then others you could literally do lying in bed and it's, like, a neck and shoulder release and stuff like that. So it varies, but it's good stuff, man. It's it's always good to have something like yoga to keep you going. I think you you were the one that told me about yoga ages ago and I was like, nah, I'm not trying that. It's for, it's for girls. Because that's, as a, as a man, I think that's what we've been brought up to think yeah. Then I tried it and I was like, what is this sorcery? <laughs> <laughs> I feel so connected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling things I've never felt before. <laughs> yeah, Re- you start releasing emotion and you get emotional. and You do, mate. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't that loving realize. kindness yoga is. Loving yeah. kindness. I didn't realise how how um, how much emotion actually went into it. I yeah. thought it was just, I, at first, I just thought it was just stretching. Yeah, um, I did. There's a massive difference, isn't there? But yeah, definitely, especially if you get someone who's good at it, someone who's good at guiding you. Yeah. Well, she's always like expressing, like you express gratitude towards your body and and all that kind of stuff in the energy. And mate, honestly, you you should check her out. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yoga's something that I definitely need to uh, pick it back up again. I was going to classes uh, before because I think when you go to classes, it makes you you more committed to to go and do it and do it properly when there's someone there actually watching you. Um, yeah, because sometimes you'll be just watching the video <laughs> whilst lying in bed and you're not actually doing it. It's like the other day I was watching like a, an online YouTube workout whilst I was in bed. I was like, well, can you get up and do it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you start, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. when you're actually in a gym class, you're put in the situation where you, you have, have to. to do it. Or, and if yeah. you don't do it, you're going to look like an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Maybe you should... Um, do the workouts like on on Zoom or FaceTime with people to give you yeah. that same, you know what I mean? Give you that same. Someone's looking at you doing it. I know I've seen the gyms in our area doing that and stuff. So 
I might have a look at it and see what, what it... It depends how long the lockdown lasts because, obviously, they say four weeks, but then they're saying, oh, it could no, be extended yeah. till... Furlough could be extended till March, but it indicates that, yeah, this shit might be going on until <laughs> March. Do you know what I mean? Or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you think back to the last time, four weeks, barely made a dent in the number of, like, deaths every day that were coming down. Yeah. So I think it's going to be longer than that, but... We'll see. We'll see. see. Yeah, we'll we'll see. see. Hope, hopefully, hopefully, all being well, it's just ends there, but... No, I, I, I can't see that, mate. So I think uh, I'm going to have to start doing these cardio hard sessions, man. Hard well, sessions. It's funny because I think it, it links to this week's topic because this week's topic is all about having having faith and having faith in letting things happen rather than trying to force things to happen that are outside of your control. Yeah. And I guess that that's exactly what lockdown is. Lockdown is... We've just got to have faith that after four weeks, this shit is going to get back to the tiered system and we can go back to doing some things. And I think it's very, I think this is going to be the first challenge for a lot of people of having things that are out of their control. Yeah, yeah. And you can see a lot of people now, especially with the second one on Facebook, getting really restless about it. And yeah. And, like, and, and rightly so. Like I understand that obviously people are annoyed, but. Ultimately, it's what needs to be done, isn't it? Like, I'll happily sacrifice a couple of years of my life if it means that the the the, the country that well, the people that built this country, economy wise and stuff, get to keep safe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And keep those no, cases I get that. down. But like I say, obviously, it also begs the question as well. What, like you say, what can we control? And I think you've got to basically concentrate on what you can control, not what you can't control. Because there's so much, like, you look at this week, all I've been seeing on, on Facebook and Twitter is, like, the, the presidential election. You've <laughs> probably seen it. Yeah. And it's, like, everyone's yeah. just getting caught up, and people get caught up in whatever media they can, but ultimately, like, no matter how much you get caught up in, in the presidential campaign, like, we can't make a difference to the presidential campaign. So what, 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 yeah. you may as well just spend your, your own time, like, focusing on yourself, haven't you, really? Does yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Obviously, we're talking about being from the UK, though. Yeah, right? yeah, we can't, about, we yeah, can't yeah. make it. We can't vote. <laughs> like, there's no point in me standing around a TV yeah. going, "Oh my God, <laughs> uh, Trump's or Joe Biden's up by this many seats." It's like, well, it don't make a difference, does it? So, obviously, yeah, in the UK, yeah. we tend to lean towards the crazy mass media stuff yeah. that they put out, and then we start getting frantic over that. Like, <laughs> like if you look at it, like we've hardly even heard about coronavirus this week now. Because of all this stuff that's been going on, and that's <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, that's been quite nice. Yeah, it has been quite nice, yeah. Because I, d- yeah, we've been hearing about it since March, so yeah. <laughs> so, when when was the first time that you ever felt like like the world was against you, and that things were just out of your control? I think the first time that I felt like that was when it would have been what six years ago now when I first started the journey with severe anxiety and that was really when I couldn't control anything I co- no matter what I'd seemed to do no matter how how much I, what supplement I took or what what information I read it wouldn't go down do you know what I mean I couldn't hold yeah. my job so I ended up leaving the job Um, I couldn't every time I went out I was having severe panic attacks and, it, and then what would happen is I'd have these panic attacks in public and then as soon as I got back into my room, I was, I'd was i calm down again and then I'd reflect on it. And then I'd shame and I was thinking, that's when I was thinking the universe is against me, nothing's going mm. right. No matter what I do, I'm always going to be this way. Nothing's changing. I, I, I'm incapable of changing it. And I think, again, it goes back to that victim mentality, doesn't it? Of yeah. When you don't know what to do and you're scared, because I was extremely scared. Yeah, I was just like, well, what? What 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 can I do? I'm, am I going to live like this forever? So, and then you, qu- you I guess you question what you're going to do and end up doing nothing. Yeah, definitely end up doing nothing. Like I did nothing for about two years before I decided, all right, okay, I need to start actively working towards what I'm going to do to get out of this yeah. severe stressful state. Because I think in the beginning, you, you, you're that scared that yeah, it's all right, like reflecting in my room and stuff like that, but. You've got to take proactive steps, haven't you? And I feel like when you speak to people, it's great to obviously express like what you're feeling and stuff, but I feel like there's certain people 
like myself included, that you have to get so sick of how you're feeling until you're willing to change, in, until you're willing to change or work towards, mm. work towards recovery. Like, for example, like losing weight, you have to get so sick of the way that you look. Like for me, I had to get so sick of the way that I was looking until I decided to to get, get PTs with James. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I was like, right, okay, I need to jump myself in the deep end here because nothing's changing. And yeah, I think I think it's like that really. But when was the first time that you felt like that was against you? First time I ever felt that the world was really against me was um, probably. It was probably in college, so I'd had a a shit experience leading up to so all through all through my childhood, then through high school, and after high school, I thought finally a fresh start, finally something that yeah. it's like it's like a clean slate, yeah. and a lot of people will remember that or, or certainly remember the feeling of you going in your own direction now, um, yeah. Like, it was the first time you could choose whether you were either going to sixth form or, or college. Mm. Um, and then during college, I, I had I had a family experience that just completely blew everything out of the water. A- any plans that I had during college were just taken over by, by what happened. And yeah, yeah. it was... It was at that point where I was like, am I ever going to just live a normal life? Am I ever just going to be be just a normal kid where extreme things aren't happening to you? So yeah, yeah. For me, it was... A, so the thing that happened was I had to go through a court case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a court case that was relating to my family. Mm. and it took about two years so it took almost the entire time that I was at college to actually from start to finish um to actually go through and so it was lingering over you for those whole two years for the whole two years for the yeah, whole two yeah. years mm. and you just you feel you feel trapped you feel like you can never you feel like it doesn't it doesn't matter what I do it's not going to make a difference yeah so it goes back to what i was saying where you you almost feel like no matter how much no matter how big your goals are no matter how much you do it it's you feel helpless compared to the scale of the universe and you're looking at at that in a negative way you're looking at it as oh the universe is so vast and it's so much against me that there's no point in me actually doing anything about it. <laughs> Mate, massively. It, it's weird that you've like brought that up because you've really triggered something in my mind. Obviously, I've just <laughs> said to you, like, I started feeling like anxious six years ago. And then I'm, when you were talking, I was like, bing, 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 bing. Like, I know what's <laughs> going on here. Um, basically, throughout my life, obviously, we spoke about my sister on the podcast a little bit. Yeah. But throughout my life, it was sort of because because she was ill with cardiomyopathy from when she was born. So throughout my life, she'd go into hospital and intensive care, but she'd always come out um she'd always come out fine, if you know what I mean. So yeah. she'd go in a couple of weeks later, be fine. So I'd built up this belief system as I was growing up of okay, hope, 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 and it's always worked out for me. Do you know what I mean? So the idea of hope I'd 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 get I'd get to the point where I was like, yeah, um, as long as I hope, like she'll be okay. And then I think, obviously, when she passed away, all of the hope came crashing down on me, and it put me in a really bad mindset because I was like, right, okay, it it hasn't worked out for me the way that I thought it was gonna do. I've got no trust in the universe anymore. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I couldn't really trust anything at all. And I think if you don't trust in life and, and trust in the universe, then it's no wonder that I didn't feel safe anywhere that I went because you, you're not, you're not going to feel safe. So I think, um, like I say, I think in my experience, having all that hope for that many years, getting torn away from you that quickly. Like I remember when she uh, yeah. passed away, even that, even when I got the phone call at, at that night saying that she passed away, I was like, 
even that even then I was trying to hold on to the hope, <laughs> thinking I can I can fix this, I can fix this. And yeah. looking back it's 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 mad, but I think it's just something that I was brought up with, whereas now I feel like I've reconnected with that hope again and I've got a lot more there's a lot I've got a lot more trust in the universe now and because everything happens for a reason. I, I do honestly think that everything happens for a reason. And um, ultimately, it makes you stronger. I know that it, like we were in some severe shit situations at times, and you've been in shit situations, and so have I, but like you've just got to carry on, haven't you? And, and, and have faith and have trust. I, I, yeah. I think... So for most people who've felt like this, or most people who have who have gone through something like this... Mm usually stems from them having a you have a thought in your head of what your future is going to be like you have visions of what your life's going to be like who's going to be around you um, what kind of things you're going to achieve and there's some people who aren't very uh, who aren't very rigid on that on that idea and there's yeah, some people yeah. who you ask them also oh, so what's your life going to be like in five in ten years uh and, and a lot of people will genuinely say oh I, I have no idea and yeah there's a lot of people who genuinely mean that and and don't live a life where where you're planning that far in advance but then there's also people who do have them thoughts and do have them goals and get excited by that mm. and i think for those people who really get excited and energized by by the future and by what thoughts you ha- you you're having of what goals you have yeah yeah when some life event derails that it's really sobering it really it makes you question whether things are worth worth living for anymore because it's yeah you've been thinking about this reality so much that it's almost become real. So you've been thinking about this future so much that that is a re that is a reality and it's not, it yeah. really isn't. It, it's just a, one of a billion possibilities that could happen. And the moment that we get fixated on this future state of, Oh, I'm going to be here by then is the yeah. moment where as soon as that doesn't happen is it's really gonna affect you. It's really gonna, it's, it's gonna send you into a, a massive state of, of anxiety, of depression, of, of all these negative emotions as to oh well, why isn't this happened? Yeah, like I think <clears throat> being younger and I like I think naturally we all do it and we all think that my, our lives are gonna turn out this way or or this yeah. way. Like, I thought I was gonna turn out to be a kickboxing world champion <laughs> when I was like 14 and, and that didn't happen but I think like you say everyone's got this out and I think it's so um so relevant to people between the ages of, of 20 and like 35 because by the by by I, I when I was younger I used to think yeah by my mid-20s I'll I'll yeah. have this amazing job <laughs> and I'll have uh, I'll have my own house <laughs> I'll have um, kids and I'll have this that and the other and then I feel like looking back now while the 25 year olds then are probably just as clueless as, as we are now yeah if you know what i mean so i think like you say you get derailed a little bit but you you always find you've always got to find a way to to get back on the path that you that you're heading towards um obviously i know like these realities that you fixate on aren't aren't real but like i think you you always said like shorter goals and not like thinking yeah. like ten years. Like I feel like if an employer says, "Oh, what do you, where do you want to be in five years?" I I've always struggled to answer that question, and I always just make something up because it's like, "Fuck, I don't know what's going to happen in five years." Do you know what I mean? Like I've started living like that, like especially after the events that I've been through. I'm thinking, well, you know, anything like there's infinite possibilities that could happen. Well, that's one of the big lessons that I think we've both taken from it. I think yeah. I think that you need to have a healthy balance between having them goals and having them visions and getting excited and energized by them visions, but not mm. letting that consume how you live your life now. Be- because exactly like you say, if they don't happen, and I feel like in a lot of situations, we create these scenarios that just aren't realistic. Mm. 
and if they don't happen, like you say, you become distraught and, and then you're constantly living in, in the past thinking, oh, that's never happened, I'm not happy. And it's a downward spiral of negativity and unhappiness, in my opinion. I think I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people in their early 20s and, and, and at the beginning of their careers will have this kind of ideal of what they believe their career should be shaped out like. And they will do things that don't even make them happy. Yeah. yeah. Just because they think that that leads to their that future state. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same. I think it's it's even the same with relationships. You see, you see a lot of people who are who have this. They've built this marriage in their head, and they've only been dating for three months. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, but. Can't yeah because yeah. They've, they've they've because they've built that future state, they're trying to they're trying to lay the the blocks. Let let's use it as a let's let's picture it like this. Your your goal and your ten year plan, let's say, is mm. is a finish line. And yeah. you're trying to every day you're laying your path towards that finish line. Mm. Now the most obvious thing to do is to just go straight towards that finish line. So everyone's just going to be laying their bricks perfectly straight, perfectly going towards this finish line. And now during your life, there's going to be things in the way. Like, like for instance, there may be a tree in the way and that's going to force you to go left or right. And there's no, there's no straight option. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to then make a decision while the finish line's over there. Do I take a detour or do I try and go through this tree? Yeah. And so many people, instead of just going left or going right, they'll just go through a tree. I, yeah. They'll go the hard way and they'll go a way that, that, that doesn't make sense just because they're so fixated on this finish line and they're yeah. so fixated on getting there as quick as possible. They'll <coughs> run straight through a fucking tree. <laughs> yeah. And that's I not going to make anyone happy, is it? It's just going to make them cost. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I think that's the same with life. I think that's the same with a lot of people. A lot of people are so focused on the finish line and getting there as quick as possible that they forget that it's okay to take these di diversions. And sometimes a diversion might lead to a different finish line that's a lot fucking closer. Yeah, and it's it's not might even be like better than you ever even intended like these yeah. mysterious paths that you take. And then all of a sudden what what you envisioned you've got something even better or 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 something that, like you say, that you didn't even expect happened to you, and I don't know, man. I, I f I'm, I'm a big believer in that, and I feel like again that all comes back to sort of trusting in the universe. Like, stop, stop being scared of what you think's going to happen. You can't, you can't, you can't control everything that's going to happen. You can't control what people are going to think. You can't control if I don't know. You can't control that path. Yeah, you can't control that path. Like, obviously, you, you can. You can get back on the road and, and do stuff to stay on the road, but it's like you say, there's always bumps in the road and stuff in the road, and you might get fucking hit by a, a car in the road, and then you've got to <laughs> bloody go. <laughs> I'm not, like, you know what I mean, don't you? Like, I don't, I don't mean yeah, literally. Yeah. I mean like, <laughs> like say like uh, that 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 kind of an analogy is like um, maybe like a, a family death or yeah, um, mate, break exactly, up. yeah, um, a loss, anything, just s stuff. Stuff happens in life, and like you say, it takes you a while to 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 get back on that road. Sometimes we, when we fall off the road, we just stay stay on the pavement for a little while, sit there, and sometimes weeks can become months, and months can become years. And for a lot of people, some people never move forward at all, which I don't like at all. I, I think that's sad. Do you know what I mean? I think everyone should be should be a, a trying eventually. Like I understand we've got to have this time of grief and and um processing but i think ultimately you know and it's okay to allow obviously time for that but i think ultimately at some point you've got to get back on and you've got to try you try your hardest to to do you know, do you know what i mean or not yeah. to get back on so, you've got to get back on the road eventually like i couldn't I, for in my situation i couldn't have stayed where i was like five years ago forever because if i did i wouldn't i wouldn't have got anywhere I, I'd, I'd be sitting at home where i'd have no job i'd have no money no happiness no trust in the world, whereas 
I, I made an option, you know what I mean? I, I took a path and I jumped on the path and, I, I, and a lot of it's effort. I don't know why it is as humans that we have to put in a lot of effort to get results, but we just do. So the fact that we, like, I think if, if I could create my own human race, I'd do it where these people could just do whatever they wanted. And, like, you could eat bloody 10,000 calories a day and still <laughs> have a six-pack. But just what, the, the universe doesn't work like that. Like, in, in the majority of cases, you have to put in a lot of effort to get to get out, to get out, to, like, results, basically. It's the same with the gym, same with career, money, et cetera, and, yeah. Kind of it's going off on a little tangent, but um, it's hard yeah. building your it's it, uh, it's hard building your road. It, it's really yeah. hard building your road, and and like Lou says, there's times where that finish line it, it just the goal that you had and the finish line where it was it just disappears. An yeah. example uh, examples that that we can bring it back to are Lou could imagine a life where. His his sister lived for for ten years longer, for instance. Let, and that that uh, was that was yeah. what I had created in my mind. Do you know what I mean? And that finish line, if you imagine that finish line right there, that finish line literally disappeared. It wasn't as if the finish line was still there, but there was a bump along the road. The finish mm. line literally disappeared. Yeah. So there was there was, and there are going to be situations where your your finish line and your reality that you create it just completely disappears and you've got to set a new one. You've got to just put some sticks in the ground somewhere and just say, right, well, I guess I'll just walk this way. Yeah, you've got to have trust in the universe that that, route, have. That, that that path was never truly the path. Like the path that you end up on is the path because otherwise <laughs> you wouldn't be on it, would you? Like, do you know what I mean or not? Well, like, when that, was, that goes when, back to everything happens for a reason. <laughs> when did you first find that? Because obviously, let, let's talk. Let's talk about that because it's a massive topic <clears> about <throat> letting things happen and and yeah. having faith that the that things happen the way they should. When did you get that fire back? That that belief back. I think I got that fire back and that belief back when I started to. Well, I was researching a lot on like generalized anxiety, and then I stumbled across someone on YouTube and. I, I really resonated with what they were saying and they did a course. <clears throat> so I took this anxiety course and it just sorted me out, like mentally, physically, and completely changed my mindset. So um, it was all, like, there was so much, in this course, there was so much um, information about acceptance and that's exactly when I talk about self-regulation. It's literally the opposite of um, oppressing symptoms. You're inviting, you're inviting them in. Mm. So... I feel like it's a great analogy because when you start to um, you stop suppressing your emotions and you allow things to just manifest and you allow them f to flow through your body, then it becomes a lot easier in, in other areas of your life. Like when I first took this course, I was thinking, yeah, it's going to stop me from being anxious and that was it. But the reality of it was, is it helped me to be calmer in life situations, in work situations, in what I wanted for the future. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. in reality, that that huge crash that put me on a different path <clears throat> ended up being one of the best things that could have happened to me. And I don't mean my sister's death. I'm talking about um, the fact that I was going through like depersonalization and dissociation, which is yeah. like tr like is is extremely common with trauma victims and, and all the rest of it. And for me I to go through that at the time, I felt like it was a curse. And mm. I thought, you know, this this, this is where I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay here now. And it was so far from the truth, mate. Like, when I started, when it started to lessen and I started to get back in touch with myself and reality again, I became way stronger than I've ever been before. And I realized that the path that I was on before has obviously ultimately led me to be here anyway. So it's all, even the bad, you've got to take the good even from the bad, haven't you? Yeah. I... I'd describe it as this. I'd say that when when you're at your lowest, when you're at your absolute bare bottoms lowest, you, you forget that the universe can provide you good things as well as bad things. And you lose that faith. And when, when we're talking now about faith, we're talking about a, a true belief. And you have to believe it. You have to... <coughs> 
a lot of people have um, religious faith. You have to have faith in something, anything, anything that you want to believe in. Whether even if it's bloody aliens, <laughs> you've yeah. got to have faith that everything in life happens the way it's supposed to happen. Because if you don't have that faith, then the moment that that, that you something gets put in your way on your path is the moment that you just sit on on the pavement and you're just like, okay, well, I well, guess I'll just wait here then until this tree falls over, or or I'll wait here until a, a new finish line or it, it moves slightly to the right. You've got to believe and truly, truly believe in yourself that that the world does happen how it's supposed to because yeah. it gives you a massive freedom. It gives you this ability to just accept what's around you. Yeah. And, I, and I, it's I, honestly, like, as you're speaking, it's really, like, resonating with me because it's easy for me to say now on the other end, like, oh, trust in the process, trust yeah. in the process. Because I know for a fact that there will be people listening to this that will be stuck where I felt. And at the time, there was no convincing me otherwise. No, and mate, you're I, feeling... I wish. It's, it's impossible. Yeah, it's almost impossible. But, but yeah, it is. But if, if, I'd have had, if I'd have had, like, a podcast like this to say, listen, trust, believe in what we're saying, because at that point in time, I was so stuck in my own beliefs that I'd just reject anything that anyone else was saying. I was like, nope, nope, it does, what they're talking about is a load of shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, they don't understand me. Yeah. They don't understand my life experiences. And it, it, it honestly, like, like, again, I know it's easy for me to say now, but it, it's, it's not the truth at all. And if you trust in the universe, the quicker you can sort of do that, the quicker you can move on and start enjoying your life again. And I know it's important to say that because... I know there's a lot of people that were like how I was. I know that there is, and again, you, you, you've got to um, you've got to somehow find that inner resilience. We've all got that inner resilience, haven't we, Jack? At the end of the yeah. day, that's that's why I always fell in, in love with the idea of Naruto. Like I know I always speak about it, but it's because basically, long story short, he's got a um, a demon fox inside of him, like sealed inside of him from when he was a baby. But I've always looked at that as like an analogy for the 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 um, the inner chaos that we've all got, and we all get like. And if you if you let that inner chaos take over, you end up just, you know, you let it con- control your life, don't you? And you have no yeah. faith in the universe. But if you can start taming that, like he does as well, he starts taming it. All of a sudden, he becomes this ridiculously powerful person, and it's just uh, for me, it's got a lot of meaning. That that definitely links to what. To what we're saying with the letting the having faith, having faith in the universe, because like like Lou said, it's it when you're in that state, it I've, we've both been there. It's almost impossible to believe yeah. that the universe isn't against you. Yeah, but it is. The moment that you just, the moment that you just say it, and and sometimes you just got to say it without meaning it, and you just got to keep saying it. You just got to keep saying it and keep you saying it. You say it out loud, can't you? At the end of the yeah, day, like just I trust, I accept. I've I've done that, and it does help. You because at first you might not believe it, and that's okay. Yeah. You don't have to believe it, but keep saying it, even if you don't believe it. Just keep saying it. Write it down in your phone. Set it as your screensaver. Yeah. Uh, just do something where it's constantly hitting you that. The universe works the way it's supposed to. So for me, that's how I say it. The universe works the way it's supposed to. The universe works the way it's supposed to. And every time, I called Lou three, four, I can't remember how many weeks ago it was. And I just, I was, mentally, I was just in a bad bad way. I was just I saying, I and I ended, up, I ended up saying, things are just going to happen the way that they're going to happen. And, I have no control over that. And that took a lot of your anxiety away immediately. It did. It did. You've you just got, got stuck. Well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, when you got st- when you chucked yourself out of your inner, your inner dialogue and said that, just directly saying that, you were like, right, okay, yeah, I can sort of relax a bit now. Yeah, because it breaks you out of that, that mentality of I can control this situation mm-hmm. or there's something that I can do that will control this situation. For yeah. instance, like Lou was saying, that he he truly believed that there was something that he could do to control his sis- wh- whether his yeah. sister was going to be here or not. Yeah. 
and it, yeah, that that's quite um, powerful and and also quite damaging in the same respect because yeah. I feel like I started to blame myself, which, again, it's a very common thing to do. But ultimately, like you say, when you start, when I eventually started saying, like what Jack's just said, like, I trust in the universe, everything everything happens the way that it's supposed to happen. You start to, you find, you start to find peace with it. And I feel like that's sort of um, the first part of, of grief is sort of acceptance. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Well, no, it's not. It's actually stage five, they call it, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I feel like for me, that's really what, accepting that the universe is is um, it's just contingent, man, and, and just this beautiful power that we don't understand. But ultimately... I agree. I agree. Yeah, ultimately, the universe is on your side. It's not against you. It really isn't. Uh, so, obviously, we're talking about thing, letting things letting things happen and things being out of our control now there is a balance because you yeah. can't you can't just live your life letting things happen there are times where you do have to you do have to make things happen you do have to go out and you have to make things happen and between between the two states it, it, if you try and make everything happen the way that you want it to that that seesaw is way too, way too tipped. Yeah. And it, and if you let the universe happen and you just lie in bed all that day and you, well, what will happen will happen. Yeah. Then again, you'll never get anything done. So there's got to, there's got to be some form of and and only you can find that balance between between the two the two thoughts. Now I think I think for me, sorry, Jack. I know I've just gone. I was just all I wanted to say on 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 that specific note is I think for me. It was um, doing the techniques that I was doing and not seeing any results in a reduction of my anxiety at all. But then still having this belief that if I continue to do this on a daily basis, things will get better. So I feel like, it, like you say, it's not going, it's been in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. Like, even yeah. though I wasn't seeing no results, I still had this belief that if I keep doing it and I keep going, I will see some and you've got to, like you say, you've got to have a balance because I never would have recovered if I'd have just sat in bed all my life. The one thing that someone said to me is control the controllables. Hmm. So stop worrying about or stop trying to control things that you cannot control. There was when that, that advice is always given to you when, when you're at your, your lowest points. Control the things in your life that you can and anything else don't worry about it. You've got, let's imagine that you wake up, you've got a bucket of energy. Okay, you've got a bucket of of energy and it's just a bucket of water, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, in your life, you can choose where to put that water, where to where to feed. So imagine you, that life is a garden and you've got this bucket of water, which is your energy, and that's your daily energy, and you can choose where in your garden you're going to water. Mm. Now, there's a lot of things that you just cannot control. There's a lot of things that you just cannot. Things are going, for instance, lockdown. Let's use this in a, as an example. If you're chucking all your water at this lockdown and this tree that's just locked down, you're wasting your water, you're wasting your energy. You've got so much more that you could be doing that you could be watering, that you could be growing. When this dead tree over here that's locked down, you're just watering this dead tree. <laughs> yeah. So why would you... Imagine that. Imagine that's what you're doing. You've got a bucket full of energy. You've got a bucket full of your... That is you. That's your water. And you are literally... All you're doing is just throwing it at this dead tree. Yeah. Why would you do that? Think about the the seeds that you just... So imagine you've been to the gym the day before and you've just planted some seeds. Well, why don't you put some healthy foods in your body and help it grow? There's some water adding to the, adding to the seeds. Think of it like that. Control the controllables. Think about what you can add value to. Think about what your energy is going to be good going towards. 100% agree, mate, yeah. Yeah. Uh... I think it's a great analogy. Um, the lockdown, like you say, is a dead tree, and then you're gonna get 
birds coming in and stealing the seeds and, and all the rest <laughs> of it and you know what I mean? What, 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 That's what a good you point. <laughs> what what yeah. are you going to do? You're going to start trying to like chase all these birds because you're not going to catch them <laughs> and then you just wasted a load of energy. That's a good point. <laughs> I think the, the biggest thing is finding the balance between the faith and finding the balance between putting your energy in the right places and, and learning what you can and can't control. Because once you find that balance you'd be amazed at how much you feel that the world's working for you rather than against you. It's definitely a perspective shift. 100%, and I really feel like what's intertwined with that is the feeling of self-worth. You've got to um, realise that you do, do deserve to feel happiness and you deserve to feel love and, and, and all these good emotions. You don't, you don't deserve to have to be stuck in this rut forever. So I think... Definitely, like you say, that the, the the shift in the mindset also also interwines with um, self worth, and and I'm I'm speaking from experience because I had no self worth at one point, whereas now I, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm That's a very good point. Yeah. That's a very good point yeah. because people believe that they have to feel this way, yeah, because of what they've been through, and oh, I have to feel like this. I should be feeling like this. I like, know you, you you can feel happy regardless of any crappy situations that you're in, it's possible to feel happy. It's okay to feel happy. You shouldn't have to feel guilty. It goes back to what you were saying about you You, you were sick of a situation. You were sick of feeling the way you were. Sometimes yeah. you just got to feel like, I deserve some good good things to happen to me. And when we say we have faith in the universe, that, that definitely swings in both directions because the times where things are just shit and we just have that faith that, right, you owe me now or... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you've almost yeah. got you've almost got the the belief that you're owed good good things. Yeah. Like all, although you you definitely deserve happiness. You've got to get it out in my opinion I had to get out of my mind that the fact that the universe didn't owe me anything. Mm. That was that that was coming from my ego. Yeah. And thinking yeah, you know, I can control me therefore I suppose you you you're the hero of your own movie, aren't you? That's 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 what it comes down to is I'm not, ultimately, I'm not in your life, Jack. Um, you know, I'm in my own life. And I suppose, speaking from the ego, you you think that you deserve um, stuff from the universe. But I've I got out of that mindset because I don't, don't believe that anymore. I don't. I think sometimes it's good to have a little bit of that, though. I think sometimes yeah, oh yeah, it's yeah. good to think that, I think it, it's good to believe that you are. No, I'm talking like about worth like, it. But I'm talking about the why, why me mentality. It's, oh yeah, it's very yeah. very detrimental to say, like, oh, why me? When it's like, well, you're not asking like, why is it that I'm living in a a first world country, and why is it that yeah, I can afford? Yeah. Why is it that I can afford shopping? And people forget about this, and it all interwines with self worth, gratitude, acceptance. It all comes into it to one, and like Jack says, it's about balance, balancing on the seesaw, not swinging towards one side too much. Yeah, I. The the key to the key to having faith or discovering faith is that I think sometimes you just need that one good event. You just need that one. You need to think about in your life over the last week. Really think hard. What's one real good thing that happened? Because let's forget about the negatives. What's one real good thing that happened? Whether it's you, you went out and you went for a walk and it, it was sunny. Um, yeah. Little things, little things. Find find some reason to be grateful for where you are. Find some reason to be to be happy that the universe provided you with this. So for me, I I went out the other day, the other day, and I was going um, pumpkin picking, and it was absolutely hammering it down and i mean yeah. hammering it down and i was in the car and the thoughts were oh typical typical weather typical that it happens on this day where i'm going to pick a pumpkin and then i said i said out loud well let's just see what the weather's like when we get there let's just see yeah. let's just see what it's like instead of saying oh typical i just changed it i just changed the dialogue and i said oh let's just see got there 
and it was it turned out that it was actually a really nice day yeah it was wet on the ground but all the cloud had cleared just what as soon as as soon as i got there everything had cleared and i just thought i could have spent that entire journey thinking how shit this is gonna be but i spent the journey thinking oh maybe it'll be nice let's see let's see you could have even ruined your whole day by just turning back around and yeah you you could never have even had that experience because of the thought oh it's raining that and that would have potentially took away like a really nice memory for you do you know what i mean sometimes you just gotta even if you like i said i did i truly believe like hand on heart did i believe that it was going to be sunny did i fuck did I fuck? I thought it was going to be absolutely slashing it down, but I just yeah. said it. I just said it because I was I was trying to convince myself. Because sometimes you do need to do that. You just need to say it. You just need to try and trick yourself. You need to speak it into the universe. You just need to say, "Well, maybe I will. May, maybe I will go, and it'll be an amazing time." It's the same with yeah. going out. Sometimes you just got to say, "Well, maybe it's a fuck it mentality." Maybe yeah, I, I do that. I do that with the gym, you know, where I'm feeling shit and I'm like. I just say out loud, like, I'm feeling good, I'm going to have a great workout, I'm going to smash it. And then all of a sudden, you start, like, you, you start getting momentum and you start getting, like, I'm like, right, okay, I'm, I'm going to get my shoes on now and I'm going to get in the car and I'm, before you know it, you're in the gym and you're smashing a workout and yeah. if, if I was just stuck in, oh, I feel, I feel knackered, you know, I mean, I'm, it's raining and I'm tired and I don't really feel like doing cardio or weight training and it's like, well, that could potentially just spiral into me just not not going at all, and then, like you say, you, you, it's another bump in the road, isn't it? At the end of the day, I think one of the big things that we've both mentioned, and that I think people should do and take from this, is speak it, actually audibly speak it, because yeah. you'd be amazed at how much that does change your your perspective. Because I had to speak it to Lou when I was on the phone. I had to speak it when I was in there. I had to actually say it. To, I, re- to even... I remember you calling me. Yeah. And when you called me, this is, you, you literally said what you've just said. Like You were like, I just need to sort of speak to you and, and speak speak out yeah. what's in yeah. my mind. Yeah, I think it was Ace that you expressed yourself like that. And just that direct, like you say, just getting it out of your head into into actual speech. Just you doing that, like, pretty much changed your whole mindset. It did. <laughs> it's 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 a very. I can't even. I can't even describe to people. I can't even describe to to everyone listening how much of a difference saying something out loud makes. Because a lot of people are scared to say this kind of stuff out loud because yeah. they're just like, oh well, at least I think it. If you, even if you haven't got someone who you can call and say, oh no, this is going to be a real great day, or. Can I just talk this through with you? Go and look in the mirror and say it to yourself. But, yeah. but definitely, definitely, definitely say it outside, out loud. Even yeah. if you, it, even if you think it'll look stupid, even if you think you, you're gonna, nobody gives a shit. No one cares, do you? No one, no one, no one cares. I used to do that all the time in the mirror, <laughs> like, especially like when I was. Um, Drunk, I was like, "Yeah, you look fucking mentally." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but it's great. yourself up. I was like, "Come on, come on!" Like, you know, when you're like, you're in a club and you go in the toilet. <laughs> and I was like, I was like you're, "You're a little bit loose," and I was like, "Fucking come on now!" You look <laughs> like, and then you get back out there and you're like, "Yeah, you know what I'm talking about." I do, you? I do. <laughs> and then sometimes someone will catch me, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" It's like trying to run home again. <laughs> I think I think we should normalize it. Though we should normalize yeah. speaking it out loud. You, you need to. Speak it into the universe. Just say, yeah, I'm going to have a great time. Or, yeah, mm. I look amazing. Or, yeah, yeah, it's going to be yeah, great don't w- weather. Don't worry about feeling embarrassed. Like, it, it, what's what's worse, feeling embarrassed or having, like, a crap load of regret in, like, 20-odd years because you never <laughs> you never got yourself out of the rut. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah. No, it's true. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to... If you can take anything away from this podcast, take away the speaking, speaking out positive... F- positive thoughts that that have faith in the universe if you've got something that you're really worried about at the minute you're worried about your job you're worried about you're worried about not being able to afford next week's shopping just say i have faith that if i do the right things and if i spend my energy in the right way and if i make sure i'm watering things that are gonna grow that have the ability to grow 
then I'll be able to, the universe will work the way it's supposed to, then things will happen the way that they're supposed to. Yeah. If you have that belief, you'll stop watering them dead trees. You'll stop watering the, the, the pavement when you've got grass, when you've got seeds that can grow. And those things will become, they won't even become in focus anymore because you're so focused on, on the things that you can grow and the things that you can nourish and that's what we want you to do from this podcast yeah like and if you're struggling with what narrative to say out loud you could even go on youtube and type in positive affirmations and they they get you to say them out loud and like you said like jack says uh, even if you don't believe them at first like and it's in, you can't describe it either unless you do it no like, the best no. advice is to do it i can't tell you how you're going to feel but you've just got to do it and then eventually like like you said um, you start believing it and like the positive affirmations it really goes back to what you've just said like you totally change your mindset you stop watering those other plants you get tunnel focused on the good and the positive yeah and it's just such a powerful thing just to speak it out loud yeah i think that's a great takeaway i do definitely i think what's really interesting what i found most interesting about because we've this is one topic that we've, we've i don't think we've ever spoken about ever and i find it so interesting how both of us have this have this true belief and true faith in the universe yeah massively but we can't we can't just des- you can't describe how powerful it is and you can't describe how life-changing it is to have faith again and to have no matter what happens, you've got faith that it's for the right reasons. Yeah, it's like it, it's almost like instinctual. Like there's no there's no word in the English vocabulary to to tell you that we can describe how how it would make you feel. It's when you intrinsically know, isn't it? And yeah, we we just do that by instinct. So I it's suppose, definitely life changing. Definitely yeah. life changing. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, it, it can it can change your whole dialogue that you're feeding yourself completely. You get like say if you're stuck in your mind and you've got all this negativity going on, just you directly speaking out loud positive things, positive affirmations, can completely negate all of that stuff. You it, it can't, can't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Again, I, I know it's difficult to describe, so just do it. Just 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 try it. You trust us. Trust us that speaking these positive thoughts and these faithful thoughts and just pick something to be faithful for pick anything i i know someone who's who's studying a lot on, in religion right now who's yeah. who's trying to find faith in in religion mm. and I think it's wonderful that that someone is going back and trying to find that rediscover that faith because it's the feeling of of there are things that are bigger than you and the th- things that that are, are just out of your control. Yeah. So I think it's wonderful. I think everyone should do it. Like obviously me and me and Jack have got belief in in the universe and stuff like that, but I completely appreciate that other people might have um different views, but find find what like you know what what your inner beliefs are, whether you're suppressing them or not. Find what you connect with. If you, if you connect with um, a religion or something, then then go, do you know what I mean. Reconnect with it. And yeah, definitely. You know, I'm not I'm not going to push any. Everyone's got their own viewpoint. So reconnect with, with what makes you feel like you. What's going to help? What's going to help you? Do you know what I mean? And mm. ultimately, then that's that's the journey of like self discovery again and getting back on the road. I, I completely agree with you. I, I think that's a great place to to wrap up find so do i (laughs) find what you what you believe is bigger than you and believe in it and believe that there are things out there that you can't control and things are going to happen the way that they should and view that as a positive thing view that as something that gives you energy also try and obviously daily do do some things that you can control like i think jack touched on it earlier about like eating healthy and all yeah. these things that are good to do don't 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 keep focusing on what you can't control especially with like with the media and whatever's going on lately we, obviously we don't know what's going to happen but if i say to 
to Jack now, oh, well, I'm going to follow this workout program. It's completely within my control. Nothing's going to take that away at the end of the day, is it? So, yeah. Control yeah. the controllables and spend your water in the w- right way. Don't water dead plants. <laughs> yeah, no point doing that. <laughs> and with that, check up on your strong friend. Thank you.